So I really love trim paths inside of Adobe After Effects. I use them a lot. I use them to create map path animations. I use them to create infographics. And occasionally I'll use them with text elements to create animated strokes. But the problem with that is if you've ever worked with text elements and trim paths, you know that the workflow is really clunky. You have to first convert the text elements to shape layers, then you can apply those trim paths. And the, the reason that sucks so much is that you aren't able to really modify the text once you convert it to shape layers. That's where this wonderful tool comes in. This is called Disco Text. It's a plugin for After Effects that allows you to apply trim paths to live source text. If you want to pick up a copy, be sure to follow my affiliate link in the video description. All right, let's have a closer look at it. So I'm inside of Adobe After Effects and I've created a text element here. I'm going to go to the Effects and Presets panel and I'm going to search for Disco Text because I've already installed it here. And here it is under the plugin everything folder. I'm gonna simply drag and drop this effect over my text layer. And now I have this applied. It automatically gives me my paths and knocks out the uh, original text or the fill. So now if I look at my effect controls panel, let's have a closer look at what we've got going on here. So right away, you're gonna notice the standard trim paths, uh, tools or attributes here. We have start, end and offset, all of which are keyframeable. So let me just do a quick animation here. I'm gonna go to the one second mark. I'm gonna add a keyframe to the end, and I'm gonna go back to the beginning, and we're gonna set that to zero. And I'm gonna hit the U key down here in the timeline so we can see that. And now you can see that is animating on. But as I said, the cool thing about this is that now I can modify this text. So I can change this to whatever I want very quickly. And there you go, bang, just like that, I've changed the text. As I said before, the workflow prior to this is converting this to shape layers, so I'd have to just recreate this entirely. So th this is very, very nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. Now, let's go down here and look at some of the other attributes. I'm gonna open up Style, and under Style, I can change the color. So let's just change this to like a, maybe like a light, light blue. I can adjust the width here. I can change the opacity of the entire layer and I can change the cap style. So I can do square, round, or butt caps. So I'm gonna change this to round. Okay, and I also have dashes here, just like you do in standard trim paths. I can enable these. Um, there's a little relative to scale, so if I scale this up, it'll keep the number of dashes, very cool. If you've seen other times when you scale up on uh, trim paths with dashes, the, those dashes will move, and that's incredibly irritating, especially I've, I've done some map uh, path animations, and when I zoom in on my map and those move, and I already have an offset animation, it really doesn't look good. So this feature is very good. Now there's some really cool animation options here. I can actually stagger the animation by a certain number of frames. So if I put in like five frames here, you're gonna see that now my animation has a more dynamic look. It's staggering on instead of all, them all coming up at the same time. I can actually change the, uh, the order that that happens. So I can reverse that. Super cool. Or I can set it to random. Motion Blur Multiplier is pretty cool, and this is gonna allow me to kind of emulate these variable width looks for my paths. So let me show you how this works. First, I'm gonna go to my text, I'm gonna activate Motion Blur, and I'm actually gonna change the animation because I'm gonna animate the offset and not the end. So I'm gonna change the end to maybe 60, and then I'm gonna add a keyframe to offset, and I'm gonna have that offset one full rotation so now it's basically animating. But the reason I did this is I want both ends, both the start and end of the paths to be moving so that the motion blur is applied to both. So you can really see how this is working with the paths. Now I'm gonna kind of um, make this larger so you can really see what's going on with the paths here with motion blur. So if I zoom in, you can see here there's a little bit of fall off. And now as I adjust the multiplier, that fall off is gonna expand. So if I take it up to five, now that's expanded. It looks very cool and dynamic. Now I can tweak this quite a bit with the multiplier or I can go to composition settings and go to the advanced tab and I have all these motion blur settings here. Now if you're feeling comfortable changing the shutter angle and the phase and all this, uh, you know, play around with this to get different looks. Okay, so a quick update. So this is the first version of this plugin. It just recently came out, probably this month, in December 2019. And I've been emailing back and forth with the creator of this plugin, and he just said he's working on an update, so 
apparently that's coming out soon and he just added a really cool feature and it was a feature that as I was doing this tutorial I was wondering about it and it's the fact that as you're trimming your paths and especially with this look where you are creating this we're emulating the variable width um, you know I wanted all of it to look like if it was a light shining that all of those paths would be facing in the same direction you know simulating like a light hitting it and it wasn't doing that so they've added uh, this origins feature right here and it has a unify checkbox so now watch what happens with the paths here as I select unify So I'm gonna click unify and now it looks like everything's kind of snapping in the same you know coming from the same direction and I can specify both the X and the Y for this so I have left middle right for X and then top middle bottom for Y And as you can see here as I switch through here watch what happens these switch like this top and it might help to visualize this if I kind of decrease the path there we go so we go top left we'll see what that looks like now that is very helpful that's very cool so again he just um, this isn't this hasn't been released yet on the AE scripts website but um, it should be coming soon so if you bought this right away and it's still not there it's coming very soon all right, now I'm gonna go open up the repeater here. Now, if you've ever worked with repeaters and shape layers before, you know you can have some crazy customization options here, and this is no different. In fact, this has all the abilities of a standard repeater plus some extra features. So I'm gonna bump up the number of copies to 10 here, and then I'm gonna open up the transform offsets, and here you're just gonna see a ton of different things I can do with this. So if I just scale it up here, you'll start to see all the different copies here. Now I can move the Y position. Let's have it pointing up to here. Now this animation's still going on, but I turned off the stagger. So if I go back up to animation, and I'm, I'm still having this stagger like every five frames, you can see the animation here of how it's staggering pretty um, uniform among each copy. So if I go down into the repeater and I turn on inherit stagger, now you can see it's moving along each copy. That's really incredibly cool. I have a ton of other just customization options here. I can lower the opacity and that's gonna fall off gradually um, with the copies here. I can also composite this over the original text and then bring the opacity down to get some kind of cool looks here. So if you end up getting this plugin and you use it, send me a link, I wanna see what you create with it because there's just a ton of stuff you can do with it. So here's one example of where I use disco text and I have basically my audio beats driving the animation of my repeater scale, having those copies bounce to the beat of the music. So I really urge you to follow my affiliate link and go check out the, the site here for this product on a &E Scripts because there are a few limitations. Uh, for example, using this product in 3D, it's really, really difficult. You'll, first of all, you have to pre-comp it to even use the text layer in ZSpace, and those repeaters that it has, those do not go into ZSpace. Also, it doesn't work with the Cinema 4D renderer. There's also something going on with the versions. If you're using a, an earlier version of After Effects, be sure to check out the, the product page because there are a few limitations there as well. However, all of that aside, if you like trim paths, you use trim paths, and you want to use them on text layers, you need to add this to your arsenal. It's definitely worth the money. As always, if you like the tutorial, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. And hit that notification bell if you want to see more cool After Effects plugins, extensions, scripts, templates. I review a few each month. I have a playlist called Tuesday Tools. I'm also starting a series called Monday Maps, where a few Mondays each month I'm going to be creating different map elements using Adobe After Effects and a few other programs. So really excited about that. So once again, hit that notification bell if you want to check out all that future content. Okay, have a good one. I'll see you next time.